ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to attempt to answer one of the questions that we get asked quite commonly. And the question is, how much does it cost to get into a home with an RV garage in Southern Utah right now, this summer? And if you're not asking yourself that question, well, then perhaps you're probably asking me right now, Nick, why would I want an RV garage in Southern Utah? And I'm glad you asked because we are currently in Dixie Springs and this neighborhood is really, really close to San Hollow, San Hollow Reservoir. It's like literally you could throw a stone there. And there are so many things that you could do outdoors that you will inevitably either want a side-by-side, -side, a boat, maybe an RV, so you could go adventure out a little further and explore more. Or probably nine out of 10 of our clients that have an RV garage like that usually fill it with other cars or um, turn into a home gym. There's so many uses because with this particular house, you get about 1,100 extra square feet. But anyway, enough of the, enough about that. Let's, let's, let's go in and check out this house. So this home is listed by Nick and Michonne Restoption. It is our listing. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you would like to know dimensions of the garage, have any specific questions about the area or living here, please feel free to call or text the number below. And I would be happy to answer any of your questions and maybe give you a personal tour. Let's just dive into it and take a closer look at this home. So this incredible home is located on a corner lot. This is the, 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 the road that gets you into the neighborhood, Dixie Springs Drive. And it is a really neat location because surrounding homes look very, very uniform. And I'm glad that we're getting this overcast sky, which we don't get often because it makes everything just pop a lot more. Beautiful neighborhood, incredible homes, friendly neighbors, everybody. If you don't have an RV garage in Dixie Springs, or maybe even a double RV garage in some cases, like that guy over there, then you're just, you can't hang. So if you wanna be able to hang, this may be a great opportunity. So this home is a four bedroom, two bathroom, 2,800 square foot home and the garage alone, just the garage is 1,188 square feet. It sits on a 0.27 acre lot. It was built in 2018 and it does not have an HOA. And aside from the RV garage, you also have easily about 60 feet of RV parking that just goes back on this side. So the front of the home it's traditional Southern Utah, Southwestern architecture, whatever you want to call this. You have a nice front lawn with a patch of grass there, some nice plants. And you have a gated courtyard, which is a super nice touch. It is a pretty spacious courtyard, which I'm sure that the UPS and FedEx man appreciates because Let's face it, nobody really uses their front door except for package receiving. <laughs> but it is a nice little hangout area. So you have another outdoor space where you could come out in the morning, have a cup of coffee, maybe have a glass of wine in the afternoon or whatever beverage of your choice. You have some, some views from the front and it gives you a little extra buffer from the street. So. There is an obscured window right beside the front door that lets in a little bit more light. And as we enter this property, there is an office or a bedroom to the right. And this wide hallway takes us into the main living area. That door will take us into the garage. But let's just start with this bedroom. So this home has um, different different paint scheme throughout. So some of the, it's not uh, not your original builder grade paint and I think they did a great job with it. Uh, so this, this room is currently being used as an office, has a window that opens to the front of the property and a walk-in closet. Folks, and I'm, uh, I'm holding out on this <laughs> information unintentionally. I got lost 
in my thought track. So if you tuned into this video just to get the answer, how much would it take for you to get into a property with an RV garage right here in Southern Utah? The answer is you could have this very listing for just 780,000 right now. This is what this home is listed for. And I will include a full MLS link in the description below this video. So you can actually click on it and take a look at the property details. Give me a call if you have any questions, but just so that I don't have to drag on five minutes into this video to get the answer, it will take at least 780,000 if you want to get into a home with RV garage on a beautiful lot in a great neighborhood with some great upgrades. But let's resume this tour. So as we go down this hallway, this door will take us into the garage, but let's save that for last. There is a linen closet directly across, and this is our main living area. So the flooring, we have a combination of tile, wood grain tile with a carpet insert. There is a beautiful fireplace. And this home has a couple of neat upgrades. So there's a, a built-in right here, kind of a, a computer nook, a little desk with a floating shelf up above it, which I really like. I think it's kind of cool. I feel like in today's day and age, a lot of our clients work remote. A lot of us work from home and it's nice to have extra spaces where you could just plop down and get some work done. So if the play never stops, the work probably never stops either. We'll talk a little bit more about the kitchen. Let me turn around and give you guys a view of this space. Beautiful, tall, vaulted ceilings. It was just a small tray around the living room area. Some nice cans and a fan light fixture. Here we have a gas fireplace insert with some tile around it and three big windows that open to the backyard. Let's take a closer look at the kitchen. Here we have wood cabinets and dark oak with some granite. Nice coffee bar. Stainless steel Whirlpool appliances. Let me just walk around to give you guys a better feel for this space. Split sink. And this kitchen is quite spacious. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is if you want a single level living with an RV garage, even on a 0.27 acre lot, the home has a massive footprint. So you've got a little over 3000 square feet, not including driveway of just single, single level footprint. So they utilize the space really well. Um, good size little corner pantry. You have your matching microwave built into this cabinet, electric stove, and a stainless, stainless steel dishwasher. So you could access the backyard through the kitchen dining area. You have three large windows here, a door, and plenty of room for a nice dining set with a chandelier right over it. Let's continue this tour. So we'll explore the guest wing of this home first. Let me back up a little bit so you guys could get a better feel for this space from this angle. What I really like about it is it's really nice and open and there's no unnecessary walls separating this space. So that is the owner's Owner suite, owner side of the house, primary bedroom is right there. We have the office or guest suite right by the front door. And then we have two more bedrooms and a bathroom right down this hallway. There is another linen closet. So both sides of this little insert have a closet, which is a great touch. You can ever have too much storage. So you could essentially use this as an extra pantry space if you wanted to and it's pretty good size. I don't like opening closets because, you know, I could use a little more organizing, but it's used as a game closet right now. So you could use it as extra pantry space if you wanted to, or keep the games in there if you like playing games. Another nice open hallway. 
Here we have a full bath. Nice large mirror, granite countertops. Dark, I think it's dark oak. I hope I'm not wrong on the wood grain. Somebody correct me if I'm not uh, telling you the truth. <laughs> and here we have two more bedrooms. This one is currently used as another office and this one is used as a fitness room. Pretty good sized bedrooms. Like this one comfortably fits a treadmill, TV stand. I mean, you could, you could easily fit, I would say maybe a queen bed, maybe a king. We'll stand in this corner and kind of give you guys a pan around this area. Nice, good sized closet. And then across this corner, we have another bedroom. I absolutely love the color of the walls in this bedroom. This darker green is kind of calming, but it's not, not too much. So this comfortably fits a couch and a desk. And the carpet is in really great condition and the pad feels like it's upgraded. Okay, let me flip it around and let's go check out the owner suite. And then coming right up, we have garage in the backyard. But actually before we pop into the owner suite, we have another linen closet right here and the laundry room is straight ahead. Laundry room has tons of counter space. You have a sink right here, more built-in cabinets, which is a really nice touch. So you truly cannot have too much storage. And you've got room for a washer, dryer, and some extra storage in here as well. And then right beside the laundry, we have a primary suite. Three large windows. This bedroom also has access to the backyard. And this backyard is of course spacious enough to accommodate for a decent sized pool. But we'll check that out in just a moment. So currently it fits a king size bed. And take a look at this vault. The ceilings in here feel nice and tall. I believe they're 10 foot ceilings. There's access to the backyard through that door. And then as I turn around, let's go check out the primary bath. So it has a pocket door to separate this area and give you room without having to worry about swinging the door open. Right to our left is a water closet, which has plenty of space around the throne. So you've got all kinds of room for activities. And as I turn around, we have a dual vanity setup. And some people will probably prefer vanity across from one another because Michonne and I often uh, have a hard time negotiating how much vanity space we get, you know, how much counter space you get. I end up with a lot of her stuff on my end. But here, you can't really argue about that. You know, you've got vanity one, vanity two, and if you run out of space, it's on you. <laughs> um, nice obscured glass window over this large soaking tub. The soaking tub is finished in tile all the way around it. And then here we have a spacious walk-in shower matching tile throughout, smaller tile on the floor, a good size bench right here. And I'm gonna walk in. We have two shower heads, which is beautiful. It absolutely kills me when a shower this size does not have at least two shower heads. So this is awesome. You got two separate controllers, two shower heads, two shelves, really good size shower. And then here we have a really good size walk-in closet. Lots of space. 
Okay, let's go check out the garage. One thing that's really cool about this home that you could essentially utilize the garage space for a little, now I wouldn't advertise that you would use it all the time, but we have had clients utilize their RV garage with an RV parked in it as extra, extra space for their kids and grandkids to crash. And I'll explain to you guys. So the two car section of this garage has really tall ceilings over this roll up door. You have all sorts of room for storage. This garage is almost 1200 square feet. That's massive. Nice pedestal for the water heater. And I believe it should be plumbed with a bypass for the water softener. Does not currently have a water softener, but the bypass is there. And the garage door is extra tall, extra wide. If you guys want the exact dimensions, I can send you um, a footprint uh, from the county assessor's office. But look how massive this garage is. I believe it's 40 feet deep. And so what I was telling you about using this space. So let's say you have an RV that's parked in here. You clearly have enough room side to side to have both your slides open. And on the right hand side here, we have water and clean out. And on the left hand side, we have a 50 amp connection. So you could plug in, you've got shore power, you could hook up to water, to sewer, you're good to go. But it's also incredibly convenient when you come home from a camping trip, to not have to go someplace to find, find room to dump your gray tank, your black tank, deal with cleaning. You can just back it in right here and clean your RV at the comfort of your home. You don't have to worry about carrying any extra cleaning supplies. There's definitely a huge benefit that comes with that. So even if you're not, you know, if you're not staying in your RV in your own garage, although you'd be surprised. Some people have had their children and grandchildren camp out in their RV garage. So. Now we're outside. I was telling you guys from the other side of that gate, this is the extra parking for this property. Um, this gate is extra wide. If I had to guess, the opening is, I should have measured these things. I apologize, guys. So this opening is probably at least 15 feet, maybe 14. And if I turn around, if the garage is at least 40, we easily have another 20 to 30 feet back there. So you could park all sorts of boats, trailers, enclosed trailers, name it. The backyard is very private. It is fully fenced and it is set up just right, I think. So you have, you have the ability to um, put in a pool. You have the ability to do whatever you'd like. Now, Dixie Springs does not have natural gas. So you have a propane tank that you could use for a barbecue. You could use this propane. This propane tank in this particular scenario uh, is used for the fireplace, but um, that's just the way they do things here. There's no, there's no uh, natural gas running. There's no infrastructure running through the ground. 0.27 acre lot. Usually when you have a home with a large footprint like this house with RV garage, I don't typically get much of a backyard, but take a look at the size of this. Some beautiful green grass right here, which could be easily replaced with a pool if you chose to do that. You have some great contacts for pool builders. Take a look at that. Some really mature landscaping, bushes, shrubs and nice little rear patio. It was a little windy, so those cushions got blown over. There is a guest stub for a guest barbecue if you wanted to hook one up right there. And look at all this space. The question is, would you put in a pool in this backyard? Massive AC unit. This side is also fully fenced in. So you've got all kinds of room here if you wanted to have an extra shed, more storage, or just plain old privacy. And 
and from your backyard, you do get some views of Pine Valley Mountain right there in the distance. It's hard to tell right now, hard to see it because it's blue, it kind of blends in with the horizon, but it is absolutely beautiful. As soon as it gets cold, you get to see a little bit of just a dusting of snow across the top, but no snow on the ground, no snow down here. Folks, let me know what you think about this property. If you're even remotely interested in relocating to Southern Utah, please do not hesitate to call me, text me, email me. If you have any questions about this home, the link to the full MLS listing is in the description below this video. Call me, text me, email me. I absolutely love hearing from you. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. YouTube will pop up a couple of suggestions on the screen here of the videos that may be useful for you. Thanks.